Hey everyone, so you want to start adding some outboard gear to your home studio, but you have no idea where to start. What should you buy first? Well, that's what we're going to clear up for you today, and all of it boils down to your current audio interface. So let's get into it. All right, so there's two ways that we can utilize outboard gear in our home studios. The first way is to utilize outboard gear while we're tracking. Meaning, for instance, say you're recording a vocalist, that microphone goes into an external preamp, say through an EQ and a compressor, then into your audio interface, then into your computer. The second way is by taking audio tracks that we've already recorded that are sitting in our DAW, writing them out of our DAW into outboard gear, and then back into our computer. So let's take a look at the tracking side first. All right, so if we take a look at a basic audio interface, or any audio interface really, we're gonna have two options depending on your audio interface. So let's look at the first way your audio interface may work. Now in a typical audio interface, you're gonna plug an instrument or mic into the mic input, and it's gonna go straight out the USB or Thunderbolt into the computer, and that's your only option. Now some of you might have audio interfaces that have insert points, maybe on just two of the channels, maybe on all of the channels. So if your interface is set up like that, then when you plug a mic or a guitar in, Instead of the audio going into the input and then just straight out the cable into the computer, you would have the option to have that audio come in, run out through the insert points to send in returns through external gear, back into the interface, and then into the computer. All right, so that's very important to remember. We also have to remember, for an example, that a compressor doesn't have microphone inputs. It doesn't have high Z inputs for a guitar. It doesn't supply phantom power, and it's expecting to see a line level input. So you can't just plug a microphone or a guitar into a compressor. So what this means is if you have a standard audio interface and audio comes into the interface and straight into the computer, the only option you're gonna have for getting started with outboard gear is you're gonna need an external mic preamp first. Now that could just be a straight microphone preamp, or it could be what we would call a channel strip, meaning there's a microphone preamp and an equalizer built into it, or it's a microphone preamp with an equalizer and a compressor built into it, all into one unit. So that means you would then say, for instance, plug a microphone into your external microphone preamp, which would then go through its, say, built-in EQ and compressor. Or if it's just a straight microphone preamp, you can, again, run that through another EQ unit or another compressor unit. And the output at the end of that chain would then feed into an input on the front of your audio interface and then go into your computer. But on the flip side of that, if your audio interface happens to have insert points, then you don't need to start off with an external mic preamp because your audio interface has the option to send signal out through external gear before the audio interface sends the signal to the computer. So that means you can just use the built-in mic pre's on your audio interface that you already have. And then for an example, add a compressor. So the signal would come in through the mic preamp on your audio interface, you'd set the gain as normal, and then that signal would go out of the audio interface through the compressor, out of the compressor, back into the insert return on the audio interface, and then would feed into your DAW. So just to recap that section quickly, if you don't have insert points on your audio interface, you're gonna have to start off with some type of preamp. That's where you'd wanna start building up your outboard gear. Whereas if your audio interface happens to have insert points, then you could start with an EQ, you could start with a compressor, because you have the option to just use the preamp that's already built into your interface. Now let's take a quick look at sending tracks from your DAW out to outboard gear and then back into your DAW. Now, when it comes to using outboard gear after you've already recorded your parts, well, you can start wherever you want. You can start with a compressor, an effects unit, an EQ, doesn't really matter. But whether or not we can do this is actually still determined by the audio interface that you have. So for example, if you happen to have just a bare bones little two channel in, two channel out unit like this thing, then before you even look at outboard gear, you're gonna have to upgrade your interface. Why? Because you only have two outputs and they're dedicated for your monitors. That's just the end of that one. So when you wanna use outboard gear in this fashion, at bare minimum, you're gonna need an audio interface with at least four outputs and minimum two inputs. That way you can use your monitors as normal, set through output one and two, and then you have outputs three and four available to send out to some outboard gear, and then your first two inputs available to bring that signal back in to your computer. Now, if starting to run your tracks through outboard gear is something that you're looking into, when it comes to an interface, I would recommend with something with an absolute bare minimum of eight ins and eight outs. It gives you a good amount of IO so you can start using some outboard gear, and you can always add a patch bay to the mix if you need to add a little bit more. Now, if you happen to have any more questions about starting to add outboard gear to your home studio, just leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. I just want to thank everybody again for watching. And as always, I've been Mr. Jeff and I'll see you guys in the next one. So take it easy.